Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to introduce the integer optimization analysis to you. The integer analysis is very similar to a general optimization analysis. When we perform an integer analysis, we still need to find out uh, the objective variable, decision variables, objective function, and the constraints. The only difference between integer analysis and a general analysis is that the values for decision variables in an integer analysis can only be integers. I want to use an example to show you how to perform an integer optimization analysis. Let's take a look at the example. An operation manager is making a work schedule for a warehouse. This warehouse is open seven days a week, but uh, each worker can only work five days in a row each week. The manager wants to assign the workers to different shifts, and also she wants to reach a goal. The goal is to pay a minimum total labor cost. When the company is reaching this goal, there is a particular requirement. No matter how many workers are assigned to a different shift, the manager wants to make sure there are enough people to work for each day. The table on the left on this slide shows everyone on which day the worker is off and the, the weekly salary if a worker is assigned to a shift. Let's use shift 1 as an example. If a worker is assigned to shift 1, according to the table, he will have a Sunday and Monday off, which means he needs to come to work on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If he is assigned to shift 1, he will get $680 as the weekly salary. If another worker is assigned to shift 2, According to the table, he will have a Monday and Tuesday off, which means he needs to come to work on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If he is uh, assigned to shift 2, then he will get uh, $705 as a weekly salary, and so on and so forth. The table on the right side on this slide shows everyone the minimum number of uh, total workers needed for each day, no matter from uh, which shift those workers are from. For Sunday, we need at least uh, 18 people to come to work. For Monday, we need at least uh, 27 people to work, and so on and so forth. Now let's use the general optimization analysis to analyze this question. Let's find out what is the objective variable? In this question, the objective variable is clearly stated by the question. The company wants to reach the minimum labor cost, total labor cost. Now we need to analyze how to calculate the total labor cost. In the first table, we already find out the salaries for each worker in different shifts. If we can find out how many workers are assigned to different shifts, we use the salary for that shift for each worker to multiply the total number of workers in that shift. Add those salaries together. That will be the total labor cost for this warehouse, right? So the total labor cost is dependent on how many workers are assigned to different shifts. Therefore, the number of workers assigned to different shifts are the decision variables in our analysis. Obviously, the number of workers assigned to different shifts can only be integers, right? We cannot have 1.5 workers in shift 1, 3.2 workers in shift 2. Those real numbers doesn't make sense. We can only have a two workers in shift one, let's see, or three workers for shift two, and so on and so forth. So the number of workers are the decision variables, 
and the values for these decision variables can only be integers. I will show you how to specify this requirement in the Excel software later in this lecture. But uh, this is why we call this kind of question a integer optimization analysis. The values for decision variables can only be integers. Next, we need to analyze what should be the constraints. The table on the right shows you the constraints for this question. No matter from which shift we select the workers, we need at least 18 people for Sunday, 27 for Monday, 22 for Tuesday, and so on and so forth. This is the constraint requirement for our analysis. Now let's take a look at how to implement this analysis in the Excel software. As I told everyone in the general optimization analysis, every time when we are given a new analysis task, we always want to copy the known information into the Excel software. So let's do this. Let's copy these two tables given to us into the Excel software. Click on table 1. Once you click on the table, you will see a light blue rectangle show up around the table, right? Click on this table, press Ctrl C on your keyboard, and then go to the Excel software. What you can do is you can click on the little triangle on the paste button, and then choose the plain text option, because we only need uh, the data set from the table. We really don't need the format. Let's change the table a little bit to make it uh, more obvious to us. We can do the same to copy the second table. These are the known information. Now let's think about uh, the work shift table. Because in work shift, we have a Sunday, Monday off. Monday and Tuesday off, Tuesday and Wednesday off. These are the textual data, right? The Excel software can really not understand the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, this textual data. We need to find a way to transform this textual data into a numerical way. As we learned in the network modeling theory lecture, we frequently use number zero to represent no to a question. We use uh, number one to represent the yes answer to a question, right? So we can use the same method to represent uh, which days a worker is coming to work, which days the worker is off work, right? Let's do this. Let's create uh, a new table. Let's copy the shift numbers and then find a new cell. Let's choose uh, C11 and then paste the shift ID number. Next, I want to create a weekly schedule. I want to type in Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is a weekly schedule. And then I want to transform the days off into a numerical way. This is what I will do. For shift 1, they have a Sunday and a Monday off. I want to type in 0 and 0 for Sunday and Monday in shift 1. From Tuesday, I start typing 1, 1, 1, 1. I want to do the same for shift 2. According to the table above, Monday and Tuesday off for shift 2. So for shift 2, Sunday should be 1, and then Monday should be 0, Tuesday should be 0, and then from Wednesday, they are all 1s. I can drag the autofill button to fill the rest of the cells. I can do the same for the rest of the shift. Shift 3, Tuesday and Wednesday off. So 1 for Sunday, 1 for Monday, 0 for Tuesday, 0 for Wednesday, and then 1, 
one one for shift to four Wednesday and Thursdays off one 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 zero zero one one shift to five Thursday and Friday off Sunday is one Monday is one Tuesday one Wednesday one and then Thursday zero Friday zero Saturday one shift six we can do similar one 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 and then Friday we type in zero Saturday type in zero shift seven Sunday and uh, Saturday off so let's type in zero for Sunday one all the way to Friday and then zero for Saturday next let's copy the salary data into the shift schedule let's copy this range and then paste it into K11 because we want to make sure we are able to do the mathematical calculation let's change the data format to general instead of using the dollar sign in the data set keep the range selected and then choose general on the top menu then we want to create a new range to hold the, the decision variables number of workers since this is the decision variable we want to change the background color to light blue to make it more noticeable to us This is the new shift schedule. Here we want to look at uh, the constraint. For Sunday, we need at least 18 people, right? Monday, at least 27. So let's list this capacity limit into the work schedule. In cell C19, I want to type in capacity. And then I want to list this requirement for Sunday, Monday, and so on and so forth. What we can do is we select the capacity requirements, make a copy, and then click on cell D19. Here we want to use a shortcut. Let's click on the little triangle on the paste button, and then choose the transpose option. As you can see, the last one in the top menu, transpose. And then you can list the requirements uh, in one step as you can see 18 for Sunday 27 for Monday and so on and so forth these are the minimum number of workers needed for each day we have the required minimum number of workers for each day now we need to calculate how many people can actually come to work every day so let's create a new row let's call this real number of workers so in this row, we need to calculate uh, how many people they can actually come to the warehouse, right? How can we calculate this number? When we calculate these numbers, the transformation we just did is really helpful. Let's use Sunday as an example. When we look at the original table, shift one is off on Sunday. That's why we use zero to represent they are off on Sunday. If we use 0 to multiply the number of workers in shift 1, then we still get a 0, right? That means there's nobody coming to work on Sunday from shift 1. Let's take a look at shift 2. In the original table, shift 2 is not off on Sunday. That's why we use 1 to represent they are not off on Sunday. 1 to multiply the number of workers in shift 2 is still the number of workers in shift 2, right? That means those people will come to work on Sunday. We can use the same logic to analyze shift 3, 4, 5, and 6. Shift 7 is very similar to shift 1. When we look at the original table, shift 7 is off on Sunday. That's why we use zero to represent they are off on Sunday. 
zero to multiply the number of workers in shift 7, we still get zero. That means nobody from shift 7 will come to work on Sunday. So when we calculate the number of workers who can actually come to work on Sunday, we need to use a sum product function. In cell D20, let's type in sum product. The first parameter for sum product will be the zeros and ones under the Sunday column, and then a comma. The second parameter should be the number of workers in different shifts. This will be the sum product function. If a shift is off on Sunday, zero to multiply the number of workers in that shift is still zero. We don't add those shifts into the total for Sunday. This is the logic behind this sum product function. Since the number of workers is always in the L column, let's change the reference to absolute reference. Dollar sign L, dollar sign 12, dollar sign L, dollar sign 18. And then press enter. This will be the number of workers who can actually come to work on Sunday. We can copy the same function to the rest of the days in this week. We need to drag the autofill button to Monday, Tuesday to Saturday. These are the real number of workers who can come to work every day. The last step is to calculate the, the total labor cost. So let's find a cell. Let's find the C22. Let's type in total labor. And then in D22, let's type in equal sign and then sum product. This one, we need to use the salary for each worker in each shift to multiply the number of workers in different shifts. This is the objective function. Let's change the background color to yellow to make it more noticeable to us. Now we are ready to perform the optimization analysis. Let's click on the data tab on the top and then select the solver. For the objective cell, we need to select the yellow cell. This is the objective. We want to minimize it, so let's choose mean, minimize. Next, we want to select the decision variables. This will be the light blue range. Next, we need to specify the constraints. The first constraint, as I discussed uh, at the beginning of this lecture, the number of workers should be integers, right? So let's add this constraint into the box. Click Add. And then here you want to select uh, the light blue range because it represents the number of workers in different shifts, right? Select this range. In the drop-down list in the middle, choose INT. This represents integers. Once you select INT, you will find the integer automatically show up in the constraint box. Click OK. This is how you specify an integer optimization analysis. Next, we want to add the second constraint. The second constraint is no matter how we assign the number of workers to different shifts, the real number of workers for each day, which is from a cell E20 to J20, must be greater than or equal to the required minimum number of workers for each day. This is the second constraint. Let's click OK. And then make sure we check the box before non-negative. And then in the solving method, let's choose simplex LP. Then click solve. We found the solution, click OK. This is the solution to our question. As you can see, 
22,540 is the minimum total labor cost for our question. Next, we want to make sure the constraints are satisfied. We look at the real number of workers. All the numbers are either greater than or equal to the required minimum number of workers every day. And also, this column shows how many number of workers we should assign to a different shift. Here, I think I kept the uh, format from Excel file. Let's change the data type to general. Yeah, this will be the number of workers that should be assigned to different shifts. By the way, because of the computer software difference, you could have uh, different answers from mine. If you find uh, different answers, you want to check if the constraints are both satisfied. First, check if you have uh, all integers for the light blue range. Second, check if you have a minimum number of workers come to work every day. As long as both constraints are satisfied, it is acceptable to have uh, different answers. The reason we have different answer is that some older software doesn't have uh, so much computing power or round the number to different position after the decimal point. That's why you could have a different answer. But I believe you will get the same answer if you are using Excel 2010 or above. This is how we perform the integer optimization analysis.